I'm here in South London Sea to interview Mr. Charlie Weber, an artist, writer, journalist from London. Welcome to South London. We are uh, having a, a fundraiser event to raise money for the uh, Freedom of Control documentary. We have a lot of uh, interesting artists. We'll be selling some, some uh, raising money for charity with Gabriella Zart, uh, Gabriella Maria, and we'll have sketches, music, things like that, live stream. And if you want to support the cause of freedom, this is the year of freedom, 2011. We'll be leaving. Uh, raising £100,000 to leave London uh, at the end of summer 2011 and, uh, and, um, and then uh, travel down through Berlin, uh, developed revolution countries, interview leaders, democracy leaders. Life is, is a particular buzz because you know people are out there, uh, it's almost like you're, some people like to sing and get on stage, I love to get on radio and know that you're connected to this whole mm. mysterious bunch of in, people you can't see. Yeah, in uh, direct, exactly, in that second, isn't it? In that moment, exactly. What was in Istanbul I read about and I want to hear from you, what was it there? So it's well, uh, just, just for the viewers, I mean, or for the listeners, the um, Istanbul is an amazing place. It's very uh, full been. of life. And yes, I would like to. It's very different to the West. Uh, I probably had more experience in life there than you can here. experience more life there than, than America or here. Or, oh, um, really? But it, well, just in terms of the people, are, the friendships are a lot deeper uh, mm. And, mm. and more substantial. So you're always swept up by the life, you know, in a country like that. Um, wow. But it, but it was we did do the, the techno festival, which was like a, the first big electronic festival sponsored by Seagram's, my co produced that. You did this in Istanbul, and you were very happy, correct? I was I was thrilled. We went there with uh, a couple of the co producers, uh, and we did go to Radio Two in 2019. Did it live uh, just to promote the show. Uh, so you have you lots know. of experience. So. Well, it, it's a, it was a buzz. I mean, you can joke on the radio. We, I joked that, you know, after they interviewed us and about all the different artists, uh, and we had some fun. And then I said, and, you know, the best thing of all is, guys, that the girls here are actually the beautiful uh, uh, girls are all naked in the studio. Like uh, and we got a lot of, we got a laugh for that. I'm but the point is about. You can't joke about me because uh, I have a video in there. Because you have a mask, right? <laughs> <laughs> you have a video. And a mask. <laughs> Well, my official name is on my birth certificate of Charlie. Yes. Uh, my second name is Bo, B-E-A-U. That's the name of my son oh, also. Um, and he was a wonderful, large, great, cool guy. Right? He's, he's even taller than me in Basic Street. Um, and then Hercules. There's one I don't like to talk about. It's Hercules. It was a tough one to grow up with. Oh, <laughs> yes. Because, because they really spoke to you. I've always been quite big for my age, but still. You know, if you have Hercules in the playground, you're going to get it. <laughs> yeah. That's why you have such a lovely voice. It has to come from oh, you. Oh, thank, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Well, I love your voice too. Thank you. Anyway, thank you for having me on the show. Welcome, my pleasure. And um, it's always uh, an honor for me to have such a great artist like you. I enjoy listening to your music. Too kind, but thank you. Can you tell us a bit um, about yourself, about the place where you were born, how was your childhood? Not too long, just a few words, just to let us know where are I you will, born. I will, certainly. If you were born. <laughs> uh, when, when was I born? Yes. Uh, I was born in uh, 1960s. And, <laughs> right, um, you are like me, you don't want to say exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm born in 64. Um, so, so I'm uh, well, a wise man, well mature. <laughs> Some things that's okay with you age. You have to say the age. People can guess if they know much to do. <laughs> but I, I was born sort of uh, mid '60s uh, okay. and, and grew up in a sort of rock and roll environment. So, um, um, but yeah, I'm I'm um, excited about rock and roll music and, and the life they had. Uh, the artist, which was really different, perhaps, is it different from the life of I mean, I think it was, it was very interesting. I think they were going through, uh, a, you know, cultural sort of uh, evil, uh, 
change in society, a change in consciousness, whatever you call it, a big primary change in the 60s occurred. Mm. A lot of artists said that, you know, um, mm. uh, life is about something more than maybe uh, the traditional, extremely traditional ways of looking at life. It, it's easy to get carried away with, mm. you know, especially if you're consuming chemicals or alcohol or drugs. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and of course they did explore many of the wonderful people we know, like Hendrix, uh, who I met mm. as a wow. kid, Jim Hendrix. And so I met him in, in the Albert Hall. He put me on his shoulders uh -huh. backstage before wow. the show. So I was maybe three or four years old. You've been a, an artist from a young age. <laughs> well, I've been around, you know, to it influences you in the, in the extent that there's mm. there's good art, there's good artists, and you know that that I suppose your your perception of. Uh, what is good enough or you know what you want to get at where you want to get to spiritually or just in your music mm. uh, it, it should come from that kind of uh, is it, it was in your soul music was in your soul always was there I was always I was always told that I was a writer oh. there are people on the web looking for romance their stories reflect the longing disconnect and distance of life lived on the internet I find it embarrassing to call Shakespeare only because his writing is so much better than anyone else, but he knew about this a long time ago. Nothing, nothing can replace loved ones. I'm sure there are healthier relationships to have in the present, real, ever unfolding reality than Jay than chasing a spirit of an old friend in dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask you please, how many brothers you have? Pretty one of them's a soldier, my younger brother's a highly trained uh, special forces guy. Wow. Special, both, both services guy. Uh, and he's a wonderful guy, he's, there's a picture of him we'll try and put on, but as a kid, uh, you know, he's a bit of a, he's actually, a, you know, a bit, uh, you would think he would be an artist or a cook or something, he's a very lovely guy. Mm -hmm. um, but he got into soldiering and he's very good at that. And my other brother is Jake Weber, who's on the show Medium with Patricia Arquette. And, wow. you know, they're, they're quite successful. Um, he's quite successful doing that, quite happy doing that in Malibu. I mean, I, I've basically been a film editor for a lot of my life and a writer and producer and director of different stuff. So I've always been a writer. Uh, I'm a member of the American Association of Composers, Authors and Producers. Wow. So I have a rec record out of different stuff. I've edited a lot of documentaries, won awards for That's sort of. So James Earl Jones, A&E and stuff like oh, that. It's amazing but, to talk to you. I feel so honoured. <laughs> and I and well, it's it's nothing that that big compared to some of these, you know uh, some of the things I've well, expressed. Well, they are about. because you spend your life between uh, this artist side of which I did not experience so much. Lately. And this makes well, me feel lucky. You to are be not, you are an artist. I, I feel lucky to be around you. <laughs> This painting is called The Hand of God. So you can see here a hand who comes from the top, actually from heaven, it's a very long hand, and touches the top of a tree. It comes over to, to, to help you, help every human being to overcome the difficulties they have in their lives. And this tree symbolizes the tree of our um, love and the uh, hearts are present here you can see the heart and inside is god and i want you to to tell people that god basically is love some people interpret god in different way and see god have different opinion on who is god right. what god is for me god is um, is an energy and is um, basically is love well i did spend like a, about six years Six years in New York, three of them for CBS and a lot of different documentaries. When you say time, CBS, I, can you explain to us? So many of us don't know what this means. Well, CBS is, they, they call it the, the Tiffany Network. It's supposed to be the Tiffany Network of, of uh, broadcasting, doing entertainment news for different, uh, I don't know, di different films, every film that they'd make, every TV series. Um, right. And I did that with Teresa Crawford, and that was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, but it was a little bit limiting in terms of how do you grow from there, and also uh, you're just editing other people's work. So. Yeah. Uh, you so are then I kind of a writer. <laughs> you want to be part of this. Um, you stopped the connection when you said that about the mother 
uh, she had a connection with Rolling Stone, or with who? Yeah, so, so she was very good friends with, with that sort of crowd. She had, um, you know... Uh, How was this possible? I mean... Um, well, they were just... Is this, uh, Charlie, is this real in your life happened, this thing, or you don't know? No, it's very real. Isn't yeah, it? there's a book out about the family uh, called they, A Day in the Life, in the I life, feel, yes. and it covers all of that dramatic early part of my life. You can find, um, for the listener, I'm saying, they can find, if they put it on Google, Robert Greenfield, A Day in Life, they can find a, fragments. A, a, day, mm-hmm. a Day in the Life, you can find fragments and you can buy it on Amazon. Uh, he's quite a famous writer, he's written a lot of books, so it's all very real. My, my father and mother were, I was the page boy at the Mick, Mick Jagger and Bianca Jagger wedding uh, with my, my brother and Keith Richards' son. So when we were very young, uh, we were waiting for my the, the Rolling Stones. We were living with Keith in the south of France. Uh, the Rolling Stones. Well, um, my mother met right. Anita Anita Pannenberg, who is Keith Richards' girl at the time, uh, the mother of his child, Marlon. Uh, met her in a drug rehabilitation clinic. Uh, Tough in that life, clinic, isn't it? Tough life. In that clinic, they had an affair, like a, a romantic affair. Oh, this my, is strange. <laughs> my mother and this this, this uh, very wild but beautiful woman, Anita. I would love um, to see some pictures of your mom. Yeah, I'll, I mean, there's, 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 there's quite a lot. I'll show you them. Um, and we'll put them on your video if you want to. You can edit them in all that. Yeah. The question concerns ghosts and whether choose what we can change, life, the present, over that which we cannot, our past. I wanted to say if you use social media, but you already told us that you use yeah, well, I'll just tell you quickly, we, we did release an album, a film company that we edited the film Swing for with Jackie Bissett, you can see that, Swing, uh, the movie.com. Um, I was lucky enough to go out there and they wow. invest in a record uh, in LA, we made that. You have important things to get on with out there. You just have to believe. We're all visiting. Do you believe in angels? <laughs> do you? I do now. It'll be one dollar to get in. It's got a great cast with uh, Jacqueline Bissett and Tom Skerritt. It's a real good sound and bass. You have a forum, you have a voice piece, and you can represent people on a uh, on a basis where that represents the populace. Okay. And do you think then, uh, without putting any words in your mouth, but would you think something? Again, I feel very similar being organised with you say, being clear and eloquent, and having a voice is something obviously Radio State Newton would like to do for you as for everybody, all business. Would you think that that's a nice idea? Would that be I think, in line I think... with the business associations? Well, I think I think what you have to remember, if we look at the context of Stoke Newington, Stoke Newington has always had very outspoken people with, you know, a voice piece that is very kind of um, debatable, you know, changing of uh, the thought pattern 
of the people of this country, some of the best thinkers came from Stoke Newington, came from this borough. Right. So Stoke Newington, you know, Stokey Radio is, will be an intrinsic part of it because I always believe that creative minds, creative thoughts, but thoughts of the populace, you know, thinking about what the people really want right. from the grassroots all the way through.